your Bibles to, to Mark, the Gospel of Mark. Now, one of the things I told y'all we've been dealing with that this is a harvest season, amen? Now, what does a harvest season mean? A harvest season means that's a time of reaping, right? It means that, but you can't have a harvest unless you've done what? Sown. So if you haven't sown, can you expect a harvest? It would be kind of crazy, wouldn't it? But now what if you, but sometimes, sometimes there comes a time when you can reap something that you haven't sown. And that's called God's favor, isn't it? And God can do that, can he? But, some, but do you think sometimes we lean a little bit too hard on God giving us favor and that's not doing work? Would you say that? For the most part, a lot of us, we want to, we, 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 you know, we want to talk about we blessed and highly favored, and we want to walk in the favor, but we don't want to walk in the work. But the thing is, we have to understand our harvest. We have to understand how to reap a harvest. And as I told you before, that last year was a year of sowing. And, and in times of sowing, you go through drought, you go through pestilence. You know, I don't know if anybody knows about farming. One of the things about farming is you can sow seeds in one of the first things. Before the seeds even get in the ground, you will have uh, rodents that will come, birds that will come, and devour the seed. They will devour your seed before you even have a chance for that seed to get in the ground. Now, do you believe that every seed that you sow, every single one will reap a harvest? It won't. Every seed that a farmer seed puts in the ground, Every seed, does, every seed does not grow. But he sows so many that it makes up for those that do grow. You ever, anybody ever heard the story of Jack and the Beanstalk? Now, you know, what the story of Jack and the Beanstalk says that he went ahead and he sold the cow and he got, was it six beans? Was it six beans he got? Something like that, three or six, six? Three beans, three beans. But watch this, how many beanstalks grew? Out of the three beans, or the six beans, or whatever, only one bean stalk grew. But the guy said these were magic seeds. Now my question is, two of them were does, <laughs> but it only took one for him to get to where he had to get to, what didn't? It? But what do we end up doing? We cry over that which we lost, and not be grateful over that which we have. And we miss the blessing in what God has for us. Because we're so busy talking about, I sowed three seeds, but only one, only one came up. Instead of saying, God, thank you for allowing that one to come up. We miss, we miss everything because we're so caught up on what we don't have. And we don't embrace what we do. And we have to understand some, and then when we do embrace it, we embrace the wrong things. We embrace that which isn't real. What do you mean, Pastor? And, well, I'm glad you asked that question. So it says, in, the, in um, Mark 4, 1, again, Jesus began to teach about the lake. The crowd that gathered around him was so large that he got into a boat and sat in it out on the lake. While all the people were along the shore at the water's edge, he taught them many things by parables. And in his teaching said, listen, a farmer went out to sow his seed and he was scattering the seed. Some fell along the path and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched and they withered because they had no root. Other, other seed fell among thorns, which grew up and choked the plants, so that they did not bear grain. Still, other, other seed fell on good soil. It came up, <coughs> grew, and produced a crop, some multiplying 30, some multiplying 60, some multiplying 100 times. Then Jesus said, whoever has ears to hear, let them hear. When he saw he was alone, the twelve and the others around him asked about the parable. He told them, the secret of the kingdom of God has been given to you. But those on the outside, everything is said in parables. So that they may be ever seeing 
but never perceiving and ever hearing, but never understanding. Otherwise, they might turn and be forgiven. Then Jesus said, don't, don't you understand this parable? How then will you understand any parable? The farmer sows the word. Some people are like seed along the path where the word is sown. As soon as they hear it, Satan comes and takes away the word that was sown in them. Others like, others like seed sown on rocky places hear the word and at once receive it with joy. But since they have no root, they last only a short time. When trouble or persecution come because of the word, they quickly fall away. Still others like seeds sown among thorns hear the word, but the worries of this life, the deceitfulness of wealth and desires, but other things come in and choke the word, making it unfruitful. Others like seeds sown on good soil hear the word, accept the word, produce a crop some 30, 60, 100 times what is sown. And then we skip down to verse 26. He says, he also said, this is what the kingdom of God is like. A man scatters seed on the ground night and day. Whether he sleeps or gets up, the seed sprouts and grows, though he does not know how. All by itself, the soul produces grain. And I want you all to get this. First, the stalk, then the head, then the full kernel of in the head. As soon as the grain is ripe, he puts a sickle to it because the harvest has come. And what I want to deal with you all this morning is understanding your harvest. I know you'll have perhaps that was a whole lot to read, a whole lot for us to hear. So I got lost in it somewhere. I don't know, something about a 36 to 100 in. What was that thing about? He said, those aren't for people to understand and those are for people to understand. Christ spoke in parables that he did that he says because there's some people that it's not meant for. And those that this word is not meant for, I don't need them hearing this or understanding this. They get it and they're going to leave it where it is. Okay? Because see, I, don't, I need them to stay where they are for another time. But then he says, he was kind of distraught because he says, wait a minute. You all are followers of me. And you don't understand. I have a problem with that. And what we have to understand is sometimes people, and, and especially pastors got to get this, and leaders, there'll be people that are following you. And they're walking right beside you. Enduring what you're enduring. Seeing what you're seeing. They, they eat from your plate. And they still don't get it. It happened with Jesus. And, it, and, it, and to, be, to me, honestly, this, reading this scripture was a refreshing thing to me. Because it let me know that, wait a minute, these folk walk with Christ and still couldn't get it. So I need to stop getting mad with people that walk with me and still can't get it. Oh, okay, I get it now. But, he, but God, you know I'm frustrated, right? You know, this, you know this is frustrating because I don't get why these folk can't get what I'm doing. And he's like, yeah, I've been there. Keep reading my word and I'll tell you how to handle it. Keep reading my word and I'll show you what to do. And then he, he goes on and he says, you know what? Let me make it simple and plain to you. But we got to look at our harvest this way. We look at it and we have to realize that we sometimes sow seeds on, on ground that's shallow. And then when it reaps our blessings that we think we got, it comes up, it goes away so quick. You understand? I mean, it's gone. You ever, you ever thought that this is the blessing from God and you get it and you shout on it and then you turn around three months later and it's all gone? He said, like, wait a minute, God, I thought this is my time. I see. He's like, nah. See, that wasn't it. And we get mad and we curse God and we leave God and we go back. I got to get back on my hustle then. I ain't got time for this. I got to do what I got to do. I got to make it happen. And God is saying, no, don't do that. Don't do that. Because you're about to leave the area that I put you in. You sow seeds all over here. And because it grew, and I'm, if we look at where we are out here, we're in a beautiful park. We're outside, right? Now, if I sow, if you sow seeds right here where you're sitting at, it's dirt, it's ground. 
It can grow, can it? But is it gonna grow as well over here as it is over there? No, because here, guess what? Gets a lot of traffic, people step on it, you know, and it can't get deep. You know, it's like, you ever seen grass grow up out of concrete? But one thing, it can't grow too much, can it? You know, it only grows in sprouts. But then it's at the same time, you grow grass where it's supposed to be, and you turn the soil, and you tilled it, it does a whole lot better, doesn't it? It doesn't mean you can't grow anywhere. It just means that, listen, we gotta understand the difference from where you sowed your seed at, and understand the difference in that harvest. That means that don't get mad and shout on what you think is your harvest, and it's not. It's just temporary. And what God is, he's like, well, why would God show that to me? He's saying, if it can grow, if a little bit can grow here, imagine what will grow over here. If you just scattered and dropped some seeds over here, it amazes me how we have, I don't know if you ever planted a tree before. When I was a, when I was a Boy Scout, we planted trees. Every year, you know, we, we're, we planted trees for the environment. And it amazed me I planted a little, a little pine tree, you know. And I could, and I, but I couldn't understand how a pine, my pine tree took so long to grow. You know, I mean, I watched it for years. Like, it wasn't growing. It wasn't growing. It wasn't growing. But yet, I saw this abandoned house around the corner, you know, the next neighborhood. I saw how, you ever seen when you let grass grow? And you think it's a, and this one thing grows up and it's like purple and green. And you like, that's a plant. But then all of a sudden it turns into a tree. And you wonder, where did this come from? Y'all ever seen that happen before? See, y'all didn't know. If you did long yard work, you'd know about that. You, you know about that, don't you? You know, because if you cut it off early, it's real hollow inside. You know, but the thing is, if you let it grow and let it grow and let it grow. Let's say that thing started growing in, in June. Well, not June, but let's say it started growing in about February. You know, when it starts getting warm down here and you don't and they don't cut it, I promise you, by August, it's gonna be a stick. It's not gonna be grass anymore. Am I lying? It's gonna be a tree. But why did this wild how did this wild tree grow up out of nothing when I had to plant this sapling in my yard and it took root? And God will say it happens. He says, because see, understand, that which grew wild is a tail. And tears grow a whole lot faster than wheat. You understand what I mean by that? If those are anybody, anybody do yard work? Now, anybody ever watch their yard work? Watch somebody do yard work and watch their grass? Which one grows faster, weeds or grass? Weeds go real, you know, and, and as a kid, you couldn't, you didn't know the difference, did you? It was all green. <laughs> Matter of fact, we remember the dandelions? We called them flowers. <laughs> You know, because remember, they turned out, they, they were yellow at first, remember? And they would be yellow, then they'd turn into the little things and the little cotton, little cotton head ball. But the other you, you call them, call them flowers. You know, I thought I was a little play, I'd pick up them, you know, give them the little girls, you know what I'm saying? Give them a little flower, you know? Made little mud pies, put a little on them, give them a girl, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, you know? I mean, he said, yes, I gave girls mud pies, you know? <laughs> I put whipped cream on them too and baked them. <laughs> Now, I don't know if that was sick or twisted or was it an aw sweet moment. I'll let y'all figure it out for yourself. <laughs> but the thing is, we because I didn't know, I thought it was a flower. It looked like a flower. And you know, you know, crabgrass grows up. And it's, and crabgrass is a deep green, you know. But it's but if you ever played in crabgrass, that stuff make you itch. You know, when you got good grass, that Bermuda grass, that fiscue. You know, you can roll around in that stuff and you don't itch. Lay in some crabgrass. <laughs> you get, you're going to come in the house like, Ugh. and your mama going to say, boy, get in that tub right now and wash yourself out. You smell fresh. You know, I mean, I'm just saying, that, that, but that's what happens when we miss, screw, we miss it. We begin to look at what we think is a blessing. We think crabgrass. We think the dandelions. And God is, and, and you get happy on it. And the thing is, it's choking out. And he says, that's not the blessing, okay? That's why it didn't last long. But then there are things he says, sometimes you're, you, he says you sow seeds around things that you haven't cleared the yard from. You can't sit back 
and say, I'm about to grow. Now, I'm going to tell you something about me. Now, you know, when I had my other house, I mean, I had one of the best lawns on the street. I'm being honest. I love my lawn. And what I would tell you, did I not take it love my lawn? I mean, my, I mean, I had that, 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 that Bermuda blue, okay? When you can't, when you looked at my heart, my, it was edged up. It was so pretty. I mean, it was that, it was so, it was almost that greenish blue, you know what I'm saying? That just looked good. Everybody would come and be like, oh, your grass looks so good. I mean, they would love it. And I took pride in my yard. But you know what? You know what I had to do to keep that, to make that keep it that way? Every time I saw a blade of a weed, I went in and I dug around it and I pulled it up. Okay? I wouldn't even use nobody's lawnmower that had weeds in their grass. Because it would, it would infect my grass. You, you think I'm joking. Because what, the little seeds, the little blades from their wild grass would infect my grass. So I would actually, if I had to use somebody's lawn, I'd wash it off and clean it and everything, clean the blade, you know? I mean, and I, and, and then it got bad, and I got lazy, and I got real busy, I couldn't start taking care of it, and one weed came, another weed came, and I had a hard time trying to get all those weeds together. But the thing is, I'm gonna tell you one thing about having that good grass. That good grass, about it's like your blessings. It can grow so much to everybody else, it looks like it's not a lot. But when you step your foot inside of it, your foot go about this deep, but it still looks good because it's an abundance. And God says, I want to give you so much of abundance that when everybody, everybody that comes by is going to say, you're blessed. But they're still not going to have any idea of how blessed you are unless they get in your presence. But we got to understand that. We got to stop, you know, and, 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 and I was wrong when I was saying, I said, man, I want my grass short. You know, I want it like the carpet. I want it like the golf course. And I was like, yeah, you can get it like the golf course, but at the thing about that golf course grass, when you do it, you're not going to get that pretty color you want, you know? He says, and I had, to, I had to learn the difference between them. And I had to learn what will grow in what type of soil. You got to know what will grow in what type of soil. You can't grow in sand. You follow what I'm saying? And we live in Georgia, the red clay state. And then a whole lot you're going to grow in somewhere where we live. And I began to realize a whole lot about sowing, about harvesting, about reaping. When I was younger, we used to plant tulips and plant bulbs. I don't know if y'all ever did it in school. You had like to fundraise, you had to sell bulbs, not light bulbs, flower bulbs. Anybody ever did that? I did that, you know. We had to sell light bulbs, I mean like flower bulbs. And watching, and I, and I thought I could, I remember I bought some, and I just put them outside in the yard to try to, try to grow. They didn't grow. My grandfather said, okay, you done, Jack? You did, you did what you want to do? Now you're going to listen to me? I said, yeah. He says, you see, in our carport, there's an area like this, and it was white brick. It was just nothing but soil in it. That soil was different from every place else. I never understood why it was darker, and it was a different texture. He says, now plant them in here. I planted them in there, and they grew. They grew beautiful. Now, I want to grow roses while I grew tulips. You know, and he was like, no, no, you can't do that. He says, because I'm just saying a rose is a bush. And what will happen is it'll grow and the vines can grow and it could it can strangle up what you're trying to grow. And I said, okay, well, I'll grow it over here by this tree. He said, no, that's a honeysuckle tree. Those two are going to get entwined with each other and it'll strangle it, strangle it out. And I mean, I understand, I didn't know all this. And he taught me this. But then when I got in my word, I started reading. I said, wait a minute. God taught me how to grow. If I really think about it, he was like, you can't, you can't sow seeds around things that will strangle what you're doing. Sometimes you're trying to grow things in an area that's going to strangle it. And it's going to, and it's going to die. And you wonder what happened. He says that the only thing that happened is you sowed in the wrong area. Okay. And then the last thing, the other point, the last one I want you to do is, he turned around and he says, okay, but if you sow, then he says you can sow in an area where it can get burned. He says the very thing that you love, which is the sun, will scorch you. Because it wasn't, in, it wasn't, it wasn't sown deep enough, and it wasn't sown on a cover. Okay? It'll get burned. The other, and then he says, there'll be those that will reap from the harvest. 
And we're so worried, like I said earlier, about that that got scorched, that that came up and went away, and also about that that got choked up. But the greatest thing he says, but out of all those seeds you set some, there'll be those that will reproduce 30, 60, and 100 fold. Why are you focused on what you lost instead of focused on what you have, what you get? He said, now take this, so I, I, take, I take this and we got to look at it in our life of what God is trying to give us and what we're trying to gain. Whatever it is you thought you lost, what it is you think that you wasted your time on, God is saying, no, you keep turning your back this way, looking on what you don't have. And I'm telling you just to turn around and look at what I did bless you with. Well, it's not what I wanted. He says, but it's what I want it for you. And what I want for you is greater than what you wanted for yourself. You know? Sometimes I've been so hungry, I just, you've been so hungry, you just want to eat something. You know? Just give me something to eat. And you, and you stop off and you gra might grab a taquito from T QT or something. You know? And then, and it upsets your stuff. And, t and then somebody comes along and says, hey man, let's go out to eat. I'm gonna go to Ruth Chris. Now your stomach all jacked up. <laughs> you can't go to Ruth Chris and enjoy that steak, can you? You see what I'm saying? But we do that because we miss out on what we don't have. And we settle. Instead of saying, well, we're focusing on what's going on, instead of saying, just hold out, just wait. It's coming. Your harvest is coming. Now I'm saying sometimes you gotta get that taquito. Now don't 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 be don't be crazy and starve yourself and try to prove a point. Sometimes God says, I'll give you that taquito to hold you over. Because you know, if you don't eat nothing, you're gonna get sick and you, you definitely ain't gonna be able to make it to Ruth Chris when it comes. Because you all pay, I'm good for that, I'm good for it. I'll go a whole day and not eat and be hungry, six, seven o'clock come, I'm feeling faint, I got a headache, I'm just nauseous, and then, by, and then when I do eat, it's so late, I still got a headache and I just gotta go home, you know? And I missed everything I could have been doing. Why? Because I was being selfish and stubborn because I want to eat what I want to eat. I'm not going to eat this. I'm not going to. Just eat a cracker, Pastor. I ain't eat no cracker. I got time. I got time to make it. Now, when I'm with my daughter, she she bugs me so much that I got to grab something to eat. I mean, she nags and she does it all. You eat. Well, I'm hungry and I'm going to get me something to eat. So, I got to grab something in or Or either she'll order and she'll know I'm going to take something of what she has. So, I'm like, let me get one of them fries right now. Let me get one of them off of fries, okay? You got, you, got a, you got a six piece nugget? Can I get one of them chicken nuggets? <laughs> you know? And she know I need to eat so she won't bust that. If I got my own food, it's a different story she ain't sharing. That, that, that's, a, that's, a, that's a whole other story. But the thing is, I have to understand that that food right there isn't my harvest. So I don't shout off of it. I don't turn it down. I don't get mad about it. But I also know that greatness is coming. Greatness is coming. But, the, but, but we have to understand what our harvest is. Don't get happy and shout on that first thing that sprouted up overnight. Because he says, even in that, when it, when it grows, what did Christ say? He says, there'll be one, he says, he goes to sleep, he wakes up, he says, but he hasn't realized that it has to grow into a shaft. He says, then the sprout, then the head, then the grain. And then once it comes, you have to be quick you can't be lazy. You got to be quick. You have to get it. You got to take it and harvest it. Because we all understand, if you leave your fruit on the vine too long, it's either going to rot or something else is going to take control of it. You got birds. You got worms. You know, I had a crab apple tree in a plum tree. And the they told me, says, you know when an apple is at its ripest, I was like, when? They said, when it falls. Did y'all know that? Literally, if you can get an apple, the moment it falls, it's at its ripest. If you gotta pull the apple from the tree, like really pull it hard, it's not ready yet. It's not ripe. But when they're at their ripest, they fall. The problem is, once it falls, it bruises. And when it bruises, it spreads, it's infected. Or you have the worms, 
the ants, the birds, the the gophers, and everything else that'll take it. So what, little well, pastor? How do you do? It? That means you got to know exactly when to watch. Okay, they're ready. Now I can just go up, and you if you watch people that, that have apple orchards, you don't see them struggling. They just go up. They can just matter of fact, they got something to shoot. They can just, just shake it, and what do they do? They just fall into the basket. You know what I'm saying? And what do they do once they get them? They, do they sit them at the house? No, you go straight to the market. That's how y'all get your fresh produce. And literally, it's just that fresh, you know? And they do this because they know it's the right time. But if you're not focused on your harvest, if you're not diligent, you're gonna miss it. You're gonna do it too soon, you're gonna focus on the wrong harvest, or you're gonna do it too late. We gotta understand our harvest. We have to understand when it's time to reap. Understand when it's time to sow. Understand that it's just the time to go ahead and cultivate. So the only thing I'm telling you in this morning is, if you're not sowing abroad and everywhere you go, you can't expect to reap. He didn't, Jesus didn't say, figure out where. He says, just scatter them everywhere you're going. Remember that, what was the guy, Johnny Appleseed? Is that his name? You gotta be like, Johnny, just everywhere you go, just drop the seeds, just drop the seeds, just drop the seeds, just drop the seeds. I don't care if they think you crazy, just drop it. I, I know some of y'all, you feel like, no, I don't wanna hear about Jesus, where you go sometimes, don't you? They don't wanna hear about that, oh well. Drop the seeds, drop the seeds, drop the seeds, drop the seeds. I do, my daughter has a chilling competition. Every morning for a chilling competition, I do this thing called Cheerspiration. Y'all can follow me, you follow me on Twitter or whatever, you'll see it, Facebook, whatever. And it's a brief little two and a half to three minute video, just inspiration, with a big blue wig on, you know? And for, the, for cheerleaders. Now, I'm waiting for somebody to say, I don't want to see this. I really am. Somebody's going to say it eventually. And guess what I'm going to say? Don't watch it. <laughs> I mean, you, you, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's just, because guess what? You ain't going to make me stop doing it. Now, if you say, don't tag me or don't share me in it, okay, I might do that. But guess what? I'm still gonna keep doing what I'm doing. I'm not gonna let anybody stop. You ain't, you ain't gonna stop me from sowing my seeds, from sowing my seeds. Cause I'm gonna tell you, when I first did it, I was scared about it. Y'all didn't know that, did you? I, I, I really was nervous. I was like, uh-oh, I'm spreading Christ. And you know, folk get mad when you start talking about Jesus. And you start talking about the Bible. And then, oh Lord, oh, so, and I thought about it. I said, man, I don't care what they gonna do to me. They can't stop me from what I'm doing. And and in every and the thing is God God is there. We let Satan interfere. That's what he means by strangle up. Because we let things strangle us up because we're worried about other people, we're worried about situations, and we're worried about things that don't even matter. They don't they they have no validity and no power with the word of God. Because the word of God is what's gonna always stand. Always. No matter what. You can't do nothing better than the Word. Can't read nothing better. Ain't nothing gonna work better. So I charge you, go ahead. Trust in God. Scatter them seeds. How many of y'all gonna scatter some seeds today, Ray Jean? Yeah, I didn't see everybody's hand raised. Anyway, who gonna scatter some seeds today, Ray Jean? Okay, I'm gonna charge you for some was that, a, was, was that you getting something about your eye when you raise your hand and you scatter some seeds? <laughs> You know, I want you to scatter some seeds. Seriously. And you know what? Sometimes scattering seeds, you, if you got a hard time doing it, take what I've already done and scatter it. I'm serious. You know that? We we, we, pull, we, we go ahead and we, we record everything. You can go ahead and share it. Listen, I don't know what to say, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to share what he got. Okay? I'm serious. That's, that's Why do you think a lot of us pastors tweet and post and have all these different social medias? for you all to share. You might not, you may feel that you don't have a word coming from God to say what you do, you just don't know it yet, you know? I know y'all think that, you know, we just sit here, some, well, some, some of us do actually read it out of a book, I don't. But so we just sit here and God give me something prolific to say today. No, I just like, God, what you want me to say? And I listen, you know? 
Sometimes it don't even make sense. And I have to go ahead and re edit and edit how to make it makes sense to me. It just don't make sense to nobody else. You know. And I gotta have it edited and then I go ahead and send it out. You know, I send it to a company. Does this make sense to you? That's like, nah, I see what you're trying to say, but nah. Rearrange these words. Okay. And then I gotta do it in what? How many characters? Look, 219? Yeah. 160 characters? That's the hard part. I'm doing it in 160 characters. That's difficult. But I, I, I've learned. I've learned how to make it happen. You know? It might have some grammatical errors. <laughs> you know what I mean? You're gonna see some run up. You're gonna see no space in between periods. You're gonna see, you're gonna see me using you are instead of your. <laughs> But hey, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna hit my I'm gonna hit my limit. So I really want y'all to sow some seeds. I want you all to have a great. This is a harvest year. I, I want you all to understand though, just because you're harvesting doesn't mean you don't you stop sowing. Because every farmer knows, as one harvest comes in, another one's being planted. So that means that every season you're harvesting something. Amen. Amen. Let us stand. <clears throat>